mentoring through the competitive edge. What is the greatest resource that you have? And some people say it's our product, it's our services. Example, why is one CPA firm better than the CPA firm down the street? It's not because of software and it's not because of competence. A competent CPA can perform your duties. What's the difference? A company that makes a product, product A, why is it any better than another company that makes that same product? And the answer is relationships. Who are the trusted advisors? Who are the people that you place your trust? And developing the competitive edge is building those future leaders who build relationships with your customers internally and externally. By doing that and through mentoring you create a succession pool. Succession planning is one of the most important aspects of your organization. Everybody should have somebody that they see they could turn over the work and they are in the pipeline to develop them to turn over that work. If you do it that way, then you are retaining and motivating the right people to support the future of your company. And what do we do then? We can empower staff. Why? Because they are ready. We ask questions. You can empathize. You can work with people. You begin to leverage. Leverage, delegate, utilize, leverage people so that you are empowering them to take on different aspects of work, wider scopes of responsibility. Then you, the mentor coach, are developing future mentor coaches. I'm going to say that one again. You, the mentor coach, are guiding and developing people, now your mentees, to become future mentors and coaches. And the story continues about your organization. That's why organizations are successful. The most powerful organizations develop their people. It's a term that I call homegrown tomatoes. We want to take a look at the word protege. Back in the days, 100 years ago, we had the mentor protege, and it was artsy to have proteges. And many of the great conductors and the great musicians had proteges, and they would work with them. And what they would do is help them to develop a career. I've used this to say, look, every employee in your organization should have a career plan. You should help them to feel job enrichment. Job enrichment by wanting to take on wider scopes of responsibility and help them to plan for the future. And help them to understand, if they do that, what rewards will they receive? Let's take a look at the benefits to your organization and why it will be a competitive edge to you. The benefits, you're going to help to develop coaches. You will help them and as they develop those skills to be a coach, you are developing them to be better and stronger leaders. The organization, you are helping that organization grow people, have a succession plan, strengthen the culture, strengthen the values and through promotion you are helping to grow people, grow those protégés. So, what do we have then in each particular area? Benefits to the coach, opening lines of communication, building rapport with people that they may not have known, and developing sensitivity through other viewpoints, maybe viewpoints that we haven't thought about for 10, 15, or 20 years. Rethink and re-experience the workplace through someone else's eyes. How powerful that can be by experiencing the workplace through someone who is 20 years younger and then help them to see through your eyes the development that you have achieved and help them to develop and support their own viewpoints. For the organization, benefits for your company. You can reduce turnover. Why? Because people don't want to leave organizations that they're involved in. You can strengthen your organization and your culture and I've talked about the culture and the values. You can strengthen them. You can pass on those core values and create cohesiveness and consistency. You say, 
Rex, as an industrial and organizational psychologist, how do you measure the effectiveness of an organization? Through consistency. Is your organization consistent from each department to department or area to area? Are you consistent? Are your managers consistent? Are they supporting the same values that you do? And if you do this, you'll be creating future leaders. And then to the mentee or protege, you'll be establishing clear goals. You're helping them understand the performance, what they are doing right in areas that they need to work on. What is the performance that they need to understand for themselves? And you also are involving them in your organization and helping them to feel that they belong to the organization. By doing that, you motivate them. You cause them to put out more effort. And the benefits, again, continue and create a safe environment for people to learn and grow. We need to help people learn and grow and have a sense of satisfaction. The point in the competitive edge, don't let your homegrown talent go to another organization. Be selfish about the development of your people and how those people will help and support the future of your organization. Some key tools and in the books that we have written on mentoring, I've identified a number of tools and even on our website, you can go to the website and look for the tools on mentoring. There are a number of tools there. Or you can buy our books on mentoring and you can see all of the tools firsthand and read about ways to help people to grow. Key points, and I have three of them. One, make sure that you have an action plan, a career plan, and you are helping people to guide and develop. Help people to choose the right mentor. Look at it, observe it, and make sure that they are on target. What's the point of an action planner? We've got to make sure that that action planner gives people goals, clearly stated goals. Give me a direction. I know we're located here in Pittsburgh. And if I wanted to go to Cleveland, there are a lot of different ways that I could go. I could go turnpike. I could go bus, airplane. The career plan gives you a goal and options to achieve it. That's the plan. And plan for the unknown. Make sure that you do have weekly updates. Developing that career plan. And a plan is a step-by-step -step action for growth. And then go through the phases of coaching. And they are developmental phases. Coaching guidelines. Create a safe environment, help people to grow. Most important, I said the coach has to have a vested interest in the mentee. And the only way they can do that is to listen. Don't tell, listen. And make sure that you are addressing key issues. And in choosing the right coach, the first, it should be comfortable. And if you are comfortable with your coach, if you're comfortable, you'll be open and that person will be able to help you. Build those relationships of trust and help them to address problems. And as you do that, you help them grow and you can be a trusted advisor as I have here. And in summary, key points. Coaching is a way to help mentees, protégés, help them through a very positive and constructive way. See what they're very capable of doing and building relationships for the future. The second is that it can help the protege gain opportunities and insights that that mentee would not have achieved or seen through your eyes. And then last, think of the benefit of having that relationship of someone who is working with you to demonstrate and to help you to lead and to be more competitive and productive in the workplace. Ladies and gentlemen, if you follow these outlined points, you will have a more successful organization and a more fruitful career. Thank you for your time and efforts. And good luck, good mentoring. Excellent.